Peace everyone, I'm Maskart here and welcome back to another pastel tutorial. Okay, so this is the set of pastels that I'm going to be working with. I might throw in a few other ones later as well, just depends on if I need the colors. But for the most part, this is what I'll be using. I might incorporate a little bit of the Faber-Castell Pit pencils also. And for the first time, thanks to a very special subscriber that uh, sent me the coolest gift on the planet Earth, she sent me 20 of the pan pastels. So I'll actually be starting off by using some of the pan pastels. I'll try to incorporate them uh, to get a feel for them throughout this piece for the remainder of this tutorial. But it's difficult for me to show all those colors because I kind of got them sitting over here. So let's just jump right into this tutorial. I'm going to make sure I'm recording on my camera and we are going to start off with a little bit of this light blue color here. Now I used a lot of this piece in the past so I want to try to try to use this. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of draw in the sky and then I'll start incorporating some of those soft uh, the um, pan pastels. So I'm just going to kind of get the sky out, it's kind of drawn in a little bit. I, I barely have anything left here, so it's hard to hold on to. But this is just a light sky blue color, and I'm going to create my sky gradient first, which is kind of always my first step. Yeah, this is breaking apart, so I've pretty much reached the limit with this piece of pastel. I am using the UART 600 paper, if you're curious, that's the kind of paper that I'm using. Put that little piece of pastel away. Alright, now I'm going to grab the, what is this, this is the ultramarine blue, a uh, very pretty blue color of the pan pastel and I have this little pastel knife here that I'm going to use for application. And I've never used these before so I'm really curious to what it feels like. Oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, hello everyone, I'm going to try to keep up with the chats while maintaining this. Uh, hello Alex, Steve, Chrissy, uh, Random, Hildy, Eric, uh, Wilhelm. Thanks for uh, coming by the live stream. I'm excited to have everybody here while I test out these pan pastels for the first time. I will say that right off the bat, I, I do kind of like this tool. Now I've tried other pastel blending tools in the past and they were these um, sponges, but I didn't seem to like them nearly as much as I liked to use my finger. I will probably do the final blending of the background and the sky and everything like that with my finger because I feel like I have just so much more control but I have to say that I do like the smoothness that I'm getting with this uh, with this sponge applicator. It's, uh, it's actually kind of surprising to me right now because uh, I, I didn't have much luck with the sponges I had previously used. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating the gradient of the sky and I've just used two colors so far and I'm going to focus on making sure that this gradient is very very smooth and well blended out before moving on to any of the details because I'm going to have a really nice pretty cloud in the sky. It's going to be a nice detailed cloud so uh, I want to get this under gradient completely blended and soft before moving on. Uh, now I, my channel is uh, growing quite fast and it's very exciting so those of you in the chat if you don't mind maybe uh, giving this live stream a, a share. I'm trying to get to 10,000 real quick and once I hit 10,000 I am going to be doing uh, some kind of giveaway. I'll probably give away some of my original artwork uh, something along those lines so the sooner I get to 10,000 the sooner you'll know that what you're winning and uh, I'd really like to give I'd, I'd really like to give um, quite a bit of artwork away 
um, maybe even this pastel piece that I complete today, I will give away once I hit 10,000 subscribers. So the sooner I get there, the sooner I get to give stuff away. Reaching, reaching 10,000 subscribers has been um, a goal that I set about nine months ago and I gave myself a year to get it. At that time, I think I only had about five or 6,000 subscribers, somewhere along those lines. And uh, so I'd like to make that goal happen a lot sooner than what I initially planned. Yeah, I really, I am really liking this, this sponge. It is uh, surprisingly blending this out much, much smoother than the previous sponges that I've used. And you can see that the sky is coming together quite nicely. It's, it has a really, really good blend to it. Um, and I'm not really wiping off any of the pigment. It's actually going into the paper quite well, which is what I, which is the problem that I had with the other sponges. All right. So I'm going to switch to a slightly darker blue. This is the Phthalo blue, so this is just a slight darker one. Um, sorry, I haven't haven't noticed much in the chat. It's going by pretty quickly. Um, so if I happen to miss any questions, please just ask them again. And if you uh, have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can and as many questions as I notice. <laughs> so the real goal with creating the gradient in the sky is to go from a light spot, this is kind of the light source over here, and then slowly, gradually get to a darker, darker blue on this upper right side of the sky. And it's, and it's all about creating a really, really soft, smooth transition between the colors. That's the, uh, that's the ultimate challenge when it comes to creating skies. And you just got to take your time with it and, and blend out all those pigments. And so far we've only used three colors here and it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, hello, Julie. Hello, Drawing Art Lab. Uh, have I ever done an all-nighter? As far as artwork goes, no. I'm usually in bed by about 11. A late night for me would be about, I don't know, uh, one, one in the morning. But uh, I, I, have, I have spent some time drawing with my wife before, and we stayed up, oh goodness, I think we stayed up till like three, three in the morning drawing some chibis or whatnot. Uh, that was a lot of fun, but uh, that was, that's about as close as I got to an all-nighter. I wake up early and I get right to work on art stuff, so going to sleep um, at a reasonable time benefits me in the long run. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of white over here to just lighten it up a bit. Here's my white. One of the things that I really like that I've noticed is that there's not a lot of contamination between the colors, even though I'm using the same sponge. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, I, I'm already in love with these pan pastels. They work fantastic.
Yeah, I agree. Uh, the pan pastels, they are certainly getting more and more popular. In fact, I think, I think pastels in general are getting really popular, which I'm, I'm glad that, uh, I decided to pick up some because I think that I've, I kind of, uh, picked them up just in time to kind of get, uh, ahead of the curve as far as creating videos on YouTube. So I think that would be pastels, working with pastels has been really good for my channel as well. Uploading my pastel videos has been some of my more successful, uh, video creations. So it's really nice. There we go. I think I will probably still blend this out with my finger. Getting quite a bit of contamination between my colors on the paper itself. I'm going to add a little bit more blue, a little bit more of this uh, phalo blue up here. I want it to be nice and saturated with color. Don't be afraid to uh, throw on a whole bunch of this, this color either. When you blend it out, it, it's going to fade away real easily. go. I'm going to switch back to my traditional blocks here for a second. I'm going to take some of that little piece that I have and just create, create some streaks in the sky. There we go. And I'm going to use my white to get a little bit more coverage over here. and maybe there. All right, now I'm going to use my finger, blend this stuff out a little bit more. I like the, I like the control that I have with my finger and I don't feel like I quite get that when I use a sponge. Maybe a, a bit more practice with the sponge and I'll get there, but for now I'm going to use my finger. Although that sponge is much better than the ones I previously used. Oh yes, random. I uh, went through my blue pastels quite quickly doing skies. Skies are, skies are probably the easiest thing to do with pastels. I absolutely love creating skies with pastels but you just go through your blue pastels so fast. That's the, that's the downside. But nothing creates a sky like pastels, I tell you what. All right, let's add a little bit more white And then blend that out. Now, if you if you see dust on your piece, you don't have to try to wipe it away. You can just let it be, and it will be okay. It won't um, destroy your piece. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue uh, stick a little bit just to help darken up this corner a little bit. And I'm barely, barely touching the paper. I don't want a lot of this on there because I'm gonna blend it out. And if you put too much, then it's gonna be too difficult to, to blend it out softly. So I just barely touch the paper. I 
And even when I rub my finger on the paper, I'm just barely grazing the paper with my finger. You don't want to rub your skin off because I am working with 600 grit sandpaper right now. Uh, Chrissy, the paper, okay, so the paper I'm using is the UART 600, and this is, uh, it's kind of a jump between the UART 600 and the UART 800, and I've used both in tutorials, and I've used, I've switched back and forth between using them, and I've also used the pastel matte. Um, I, I like all three papers. Um, but I lean a little bit more towards the UART paper as opposed to um, the pastel matte. And the reason that, that is is I like the, um, the detail I can lay on top of the already blended stuff on the UART paper. Um, I just find it a bit friendlier to multiple layers than the pastel matte, but that's about it. All right, so the sky is pretty much the sky is pretty much um, good to go. I'm going to start adding the cloud now, but before I do that, I'm going to get rid of some of the dust. So I'm going to mute the mic really quick and get rid of some of that dust. Um, but uh, yes, uh, so the UART 600 and the UART 800 are two of my favorite papers for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to do the cloud. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm kind of taking a risk here. And I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to use a little bit of this ultramarine blue. And just kind of start drawing in the cloud a bit over here. And it's just gonna it's it's gonna look a little random at first, but I'm just gonna kind of tap in this general shape that I want. And this is gonna be the shadow part of the cloud, so I'm really only gonna draw it in over here. And I'm I'm not uh, really drawing anything specific. I'm just kind of tapping a little bit of this uh, ultramarine blue onto the sky. When we blend it out and sharpen our edges, this cloud will really uh, come to life. So I'm just going to start by, by tapping it here a little bit and blocking in just a bit of the, the shape of the cloud the way that I want it to look. The texture of this paper is quite rough when you're touching just the paper itself. But after you put pastels on it, um, it really it really dissipates the texture and makes it much much smoother. So it's not nearly as harsh after you know you put a few a few layers of the pastel down onto it. All right, now with that, I'm going to switch over to this. This kind of gray color, this uh, this neutral gray, looks like this, and I'm just going to continue building some of those shadows there in the cloud. Just keeping everything nice and soft for now. Don't be uh, too concerned if your cloud looks rigid and lumpy. Um, once you blend it out, it's going to it's going to soften up a lot. So this is just kind of the, the first initial shape. And with this gray, you can kind of, even where the highlights of your cloud will be, you can kind of draw in the entirety of your cloud with this, this gray color. And then once we blend all this out, it will, it will get much softer and I have that texture of a cloud. This is going to be a much more detailed uh, cloud than, than I've done in previous tutorials. So it's going to take a little bit of time. This cloud's going to take a, a bit of extra time to uh, create. Uh, yes, so I think I missed a question about preserving 
your pastel work after you finish it. Now I do have a video on my channel that you can check out that I address that particular question. Um, and it's just like a four or five minute long video. It could even be less. I think it might even be three minutes or so. Um, and it covers the technique to preserve your artwork um, without having to frame it. Because if you, if you, for the long term, you want to frame your artwork uh, behind glass, but if you don't want to frame every single piece of artwork you've ever made in pastels, you can um, do the alternative method, which I go into detail in that video. And it's very short and it's very simple. Uh, it's just, it's uh, very cost effective as well, as opposed to framing everything that you ever do. All right, so that's kind of the basic shape of the cloud here. Now I'm gonna go in with some white and bring out some of the highlighted parts. Just kind of dab it on there. Still just dabbing, not um, doing any, any fine detail work. This is going to help bring out the, the cloud from the sky. And I'm just going to focus on the brightest parts of the cloud because when you blend this, this white out, it is just going to blend right into all of the colors that's already on the palette. So it's going to take a few layers of the white to really show up. Working with pastels is super forgiving, so don't feel like you can even make a mistake at this point in the drawing process, because honestly, a, a mistake in pastels is next to impossible. They're such a forgiving medium. You can just layer on top of layer and fix just about everything. Now here I'm just highlighting random, what seems like kind of random spots on the cloud. And the truth is I'm, I'm just kind of seeing where a highlight might make sense based on where I touched some of the grays and things like that. So I'm really just making it up as I go. I do have a reference photo um, for color purposes and kind of the way that I want this uh, piece to look overall, but for this cloud, you can just kind of make it up as you go. Oh, you're welcome, Kylie. I'm. I assume that you are referring to the video on um, uh, preserving your pastel pieces. So you're welcome. Yeah, I, I wanted to, I wanted to address that problem really, really early when I started making videos on pastels because I had the same problem. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm creating all these pastel works, but I don't want to go out and buy all these frames. So I was like, what, what other alternative is there, really, to, um, to protect my pastel pieces without having to buy a hundred frames for everything I complete. So that's, that's a pretty good base layer for the cloud. So let's just go ahead and go through here and uh, blend this cloud out. It's going to pretty much soften everything that we've done up to this point. And it's gonna start looking a little bit like just a, a blob of mess, but 
with a couple layers, this, this cloud will really start to come to life. But for now, we want to blend it out and soften everything up again. And then we'll go back through and take the same route, getting the, the shadows, putting in the shadows, and then putting back the highlights. We won't really have to worry about the mid-tones anymore because that gray that we put in is going to be enough. I'm just taking my sponge and kind of pushing the pigment into the paper so that it sits there. And at the same time, that action kind of blends everything out and makes it a bit smoother. For the really, really sharp details of this cloud, we're going to use a little bit of the pastel pencils also. Uh, Steve, uh, yes, Laura did watch the live stream of me opening up the, the pan pastels that she got me. So thank you for asking. Yes, she was, uh, she was very happy that they, that they got here uh, safely and everything like that. Oh, thank you. Uh, Charlotte, I hope I pronounced that right. Charlotte Rose, I'm I'm glad that you enjoy my my live stream demonstrations. Um, they're fun for me too, so you don't get all the benefit. I enjoy them a lot, actually. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this darker blue. So this is the um, this is the. Uh, what is this? This is the phalo blue. So this is a bit darker. I'm going to go in here and start adding those shadows back. And I'm, I'm almost just going to use the tip of the little sponge applicator here and just kind of dab it, dab it in. I'm going to, for these shadows, I'm going to be a little bit more precise. Um, because some of these are going to be a part of the final look of the, the cloud. So I'm, I'm making sure that the edges that I'm creating with this blue are where I really want them. So I'm not going outside that because I don't want to blend outside the cloud anymore, only on the inside. So I'm, I'm being a bit more conscientious as to where I'm placing this shadow here. And I'm really only using this blue in the darkest spots because this is the phalo blue, so this is the darker blue, uh, not the um, not the lighter blue that I use. I can't remember the name. When it comes to clouds, it's all about creating the contrast. You have to get the contrast in there to make it look like a good cloud. Sometimes people are just too afraid to, to get in there with the dark colors with their clouds and, and then they're sitting there asking people like me, how do, you, how do you draw clouds? How do you color your clouds or paint them or anything? And the truth is, uh, you just gotta you just gotta go in there and and get your dark values um, and really heighten the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. The other important aspect of the cloud is the gradient. So you can't have you can't have harsh gradients between the shadows and the highlights. The highlights can have a harsh contrast between the sky in the back and the cloud itself, but 
when you go from the shadow to the lighter spot, it has to be it has to be a smooth gradient. That's the other really important quality of a good cloud. So I'm going to blend out some of this just a little bit. And we are going to go back to the white, get some of those highlights back in there. I'm going to just clean off my sponge a little bit on a paper towel. All right, let's go back in here with some white. So is there anybody, um, is there anybody following along with this uh, pastel tutorial live right now? happy to field any questions that you might have. Hopefully I'm not moving along too quickly, although I don't feel like I'm going too quickly. Yes, uh, Chrissy, clouds have tons and tons of shapes. They're there's so many different types of clouds, and uh, I think that they're all fun to make. <clears throat> clouds are clouds are one of my favorite subjects. They're they're somewhat elusive because so many people struggle with making good clouds, and uh, so to be able to make a good cloud is 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 a good good thing to to do. Random you're following along. Well, just take your time. There's no reason to, to rush. I'm not gonna rush. I won't go too fast Oh, thank you, Julie. I'm glad you think that I make it look easy in my mind really I'm, I'm sitting here freaking out because I'm doing this in front of everybody on the internet with no room for um, for editing and uh, if it ends up looking terrible, well, it ends up looking terrible and there's nothing I can hide about it. But I'm just going to take my time and try to make it look as good as I can. This, this cloud right now still looks um, pretty bad in my opinion. It's kind of... Um, it's, it's not soft enough right now there's still a lot of blending to do there's still a lot of highlights to get, to bring out so there's definitely um plenty of improvement necessary to get this cloud to look right so if your cloud looks anything like this right now don't fear it's the the good part's going to come soon enough it just takes a little bit of time Because I, right now I feel like I'm not getting the highlights that I want, but eventually they'll they'll come out. A few more layers, and this cloud will take its final shape. If you notice, I'm not really spending a lot of time on the cloud part over here because I am going to put land here, so it's 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 going to cover up that that part of the cloud anyway. So there's no reason to go all the way over to the left.
Uh, thank you, Kim, uh, for the uh, Patreon compliment. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to go in with a little bit of the um, ultramarine blue. So this is the middle, the middle blue color that I used previously. And I just want to add a little bit more, a little bit more blue into this section of the, the cloud. And I'm also blending it out a bit more. So I'm going to, I'm going to start blending some of this part of the cloud out. When you, when you start blending, it's going to start looking better. Because right now it looks, it looks pretty bad because it's all just a bunch of little dabs of color. There we go. Yeah, I agree. There's there's some benefit to using tool like this, and then, uh, like they said in the comments, I I do prefer my finger because of the sense of control that I have with it, as opposed to using a little instrument. But in terms of like putting this, um, laying down these colors for this cloud, I am really I'm really quite enjoying this tool because this is not something that you can really do like I can can't really rub my finger in this and then pat it down the way that I am with this this sponge applicator um, so I, I, I see the benefit in both but yeah I do prefer my finger when it comes to blending things out the my finger seems to just be my preferred uh, method All right, um, I'm going to try to blend this out and just, just see what I get. So I'm going to blend it quite a bit. This is going to get rid of um, a lot of the kind of detail I've drawn on the middle, but I'm going to try to keep the colors separated with my blending. But I do need to soften up all of the edges in order to get this cloud to start looking like a cloud. I'm just doing kind of very, very delicate touch with a, a subtle circular motion. That's what I'm doing here. And like I said before, ignore the excess dust that you get on the paper. Um, you don't want to try to rub that away because what you'll just end up rubbing it right into the paper and that's not what you want. If you want to get rid of the excess dust, um, I have my paper taped down onto an, like an extra piece of wood that I can lift up and tap the dust off. So that's what I recommend there. Or you can just blow it off, but that's going to make a mess. And you also don't want to breathe the pastel dust in because you'll be coughing all night. All right, so I'm going to tap off some of this, this excess dust and see what I can reveal underneath. Okay, so the cloud's starting to look um, pretty good. I want to add some more dark blue, so I don't quite have the dark blue that I want, so I'm just gonna go in here and add some more. It doesn't seem to wanna go down too easily, and then when I blend it, it, it pretty much disappears. 
So I've just got to keep adding those, those layers of blue. Now you see what I'm doing with this blue here where this cloud kind of splits is I'm blending it, I'm pushing it down and then I'm only blending it on the left side. I'm kind of pulling it to the left side and that lets this other part, this other fluffy part of the cloud kind of stick out. So that's something, that's how you create those, those different layers of the clouds is you just blend it out on one side and you create that crisp edge only on one side of where you, you're placing this color. So like here, this part of the cloud is sticking out. So I'm putting it here and I'm creating that sharp edge on the left side there. And then I'm blending this blue out only in one direction. And that's how you create, that's how you create the different layers of the cloud. Yeah, there is always, of course, there's always more than one way to, to create the same look. So um, I'm just uh, giving you what I'm doing, but if you can think of a better way to, to create this cloud look, then by all means, do it that way. If it's, if it's easier with a better outcome, then that's the better way to do it for you. Everybody has their preferences and all that fun stuff. So don't feel like what I say you have to take as the, the only one true way to do anything. That would be an absurd thing for me to expect. And if you ever come across an artist that does say that, then you, you know you ran into the wrong person because they're not going to be the one to that you're going to want to learn from. I can assure you of that. All right. Let's do a little bit of blending now. I think we have I think I have enough blue on there, so I'm going to just blend this blue out one last time and then I'm going to pick up my pencils and I'm going to do some of the highlights and just see see if I can to get this cloud to to be done. Hopefully this will be the last little bit of blending I do with the pan pastels for this cloud and I can finish up the the fine details with the Faber-Castell pit pencils. Uh, thank you, Chrissy. I'm glad you like the way it's coming along. I, I'm, I'm liking it so far, too. I think the cloud is going to look quite nice once I get some of it, uh, some of it blended out here. It, it, the cloud is looking a little flat right now, but once I bring out those highlights, I think it will come together nicely and get some of this this blue blended to those little little puffs of cloud remember ignore the dust i have quite a lot of the the blue dust kind of coming up off the paper and uh even i i find myself even struggling to ignore it completely and wanting to try to rub it away but I'm uh, doing my best to to ignore it because I'm gonna lift my paper back up and do 
uh, get rid of that excess dust before I do any of the fine detailed stuff. All right, let me just mute the mic. Okay, so now I'm going to, actually I'm gonna start with the, uh, the darker color, and I should have sharpened it first, so just give me a second here. All right, yeah. Uh, the sharpener that I'm using for my pastel pencils is the uh, Stab Stabilo um, sharpener, so it, uh, it seems to work quite well, it stays sharp, and it gets my pencils really, really sharp. Okay, so let's go in here and do a little bit of this finer detail on the cloud stuff. So this is the, um, I don't know if the color's on it. This is the 151 pit pencil. Uh, I think this is just a, an ultramarine blue. So I'm going to go in here on these darker parts and I'm going to create that kind of separation. And I'm not, I'm not touching real hard. I just want to create that, that really subtle separation between the, the sky behind it and the cloud itself. So I'm just barely touching because I don't want the line to be uh, so prominent that it looks that it looks fake. I just want a, a bit of separation there between the between those sections, and then also over here a little bit. And if you happen to get your your line just a bit too, um, you know, it, if it shows up just too much. Uh, go ahead and take um, maybe a, a, a blending stump and just rub it out a little bit so that it fades away into the clouds a bit. I think that would be your best best option there. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to now switch to my white pencil that I fortunately already have sharpened, and I'm going to now do the highlights. So this is where the cloud is really gonna come off the page. And I wanna create those really nice sharp highlights at the top where the cloud is brightest. And I wanna create those so that it separates itself from the sky in the back. And this is, this is gonna just make the cloud jump off the page. This is what we were waiting to do. But you don't want to you don't want to skip ahead and do this step too early. You want to make sure that your gradients are nice and soft first, because if you skip ahead and you do this, you're going to have to blend it out anyway, and then you're going to have to do it do it twice. So there's no reason to do it twice. Just do it once um, when you're ready to, and then also add those little highlights to the little bumped up clouds there in the middle, and uh, you'll be good to go. And again, if, if some of the lines come off too strongly, because you don't want to just come in here with a, a single line and then just draw one solid line. You still want some variation to make it look natural. So if you happen to get a little bit too, um, too consistent with your line, just take a little stump, a little blending stump, and then just soften it up a little bit. Like I said, pastels are so forgiving and makes it so much fun to work with. You can just continue to layer until you get the look that you want. You can vary the strength in which you're pressing it into the paper as well to kind of you know soften up some of the transitions and you can use the pencil for a little bit of blending and I'm just kind of creating this this jagged this jagged line on the top parts of the clouds 
but I'm not pressing too hard. There's no reason to press too hard. You shouldn't have to sharpen your pencil during this process. So no reason to press hard or anything like that. And I'm, I'm constantly turning my pencil over back and forth um, so that I, I can keep the tip sharpened while I'm drawing. That's something that you should really get used to doing. Whether you're working with graphite or you're working with colored pencil, um, it can be a pain sometimes to keep your pencil sharp. So learn to uh, roll it ba back and forth so that you're constantly sharpening as you're drawing. And that's what I'm doing here with this pencil. Have I tried a wet brush with the small opaque highlights? No, I've never tried. Um, I, I experimented a little bit. Uh, yes, uh, Artista, I did hit record. Thanks for reminding me. Um, I made sure I hit record for this one because I knew it was going to be a good one. <laughs> um, I did experiment a little bit with using a brush and alcohol to, um, to blend, uh, to like soften and blend the background and it actually worked quite well but the truth is I hated waiting for it to dry so uh, because because pastels are so sensitive to moisture when you um, when you use something like alcohol or water or anything like that to uh, blend or in your case to put on opaque highlights, um, it looks really dark at first and you have to sit there and wait for it to dry to be sure that it's what you want. And so it, it just, it, it has a benefit of, of going on quite opaquely, but it has the downside of waiting. And um, I, don't, I don't know if this stream would be as fun if you had to sit here and wait for, for water to dry. And that's why some, in some cases you can use alcohol because um, alcohol dries a bit quicker, but even with alcohol it still seemed to take longer than I was willing to wait. Uh, so I just, um, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to use the pencil and I'm just going to tolerate the, the fact that I need to layer a couple times before I finally get it to look the way that I want. You want to be careful not to put your hand on your your work as well. So if you're if you're struggling keeping your hand in the air, there's a few things that you can use. Um, like you can have a, a piece of wood that you use. A lot of painters do that. Um, I usually sometimes I'll use my other hand to prop it up, and I'll rest my hand on my other hand. Um, or you can use a piece of glassine paper to lay over that. You'll want to tape it down because you don't want it shaking about and then um, you can lay your hand on top of that. But uh, as you can see, I'm just using my fingers to kind of stretch out and um, reach the, the spots that I, that I want to get to. That's what I'm doing here. but hopefully you're starting to see this cloud kind of come to life a little bit more than, um, than what it was before starting to add all these details. So it, it's starting to look cloud-like. This is my favorite part. It's my favorite part when things start to look like the way they're supposed to look. Now, if I was doing this cloud and colored pencil, I'd probably be um, knee deep in the ugly stage with this cloud right now. Working with working with pastels is just—it's like a vacation um, from colored pencils because colored pencils can take so long uh, 
uh, to do a piece, especially like a landscape piece. I mean, you almost can't even do landscape with colored pencils because it's so difficult for the layering process. Um, so what are my future ultimate goals with my artwork? Well, um, as many of you may know, um, I have my degree in math and my goal with that was to be a high school math teacher because I love to teach and it just happens that I kind of fell into this this just absolute joy to teach art on my YouTube channel and that's not exactly what my my channel started out as when I when I did begin it um, but now my ultimate goal is to be able to continue teaching art full-time and um, I've made a few videos um, I've mentioned it in a few of my drawing journals, like what it's going to take for me uh, to be able to continue uh, creating and continue teaching art on my YouTube channel. And so my ultimate goal is to be able to uh, make this, to, to finally comfortably say that, that this is my full-time career. Um, because right now it's very, it's on the edge as far as how much longer I can I can safely continue doing this full time. Uh, so I have to um, I have to reevaluate my situation in a couple months and determine whether or not I can continue doing this on YouTube. But that is my ultimate goal. Is I, I just I just enjoy teaching um, and creating kind of an algorithm for art to make it uh, as easy as possible to learn because there's a lot of people teaching art on YouTube um, but I don't think there's nearly as many doing it as well as I am uh, and I have to, I, I have to say that I think that I am able to communicate much better uh, the techniques that that are really necessary. I think I have, because of my background in mathematics, I have this kind of formula for creating and formula for teaching that just lets me reach more people easily than how other people choose to teach art. I, I think that the, the teaching methods come off way too abstract in many cases. Um, and I just don't think that's the, the, the right way to approach art. Okay, I'm going to try to do just a, a, a little bit of blending on this side over here because it's just uh, it's a bit rough for my liking. So I'm going to just try to soften it ever so lightly. But uh, thank you for the question. I really, I really like that question. I always enjoy, I always enjoy answering all your guys' questions that it's fun. Okay, so I have these I have these little tools here too that I got from the pan pastels. Now what I want to do is I want to keep that edge. I want to keep that edge uh, very, very sharp on the outside where the cloud is touching the sky but on the inside I want to kind of blend that in and soften it a little bit so that's why I'm using this teeny tiny little tool and I'm just gonna kind of grab it and pull it back away from 
the sky a little bit just to help uh, bring it in towards the cloud a little bit and that's just going to make the cloud look a bit softer and those highlights um, aren't going to look so harsh and whatnot so you just give it a little bit of a blend and it's okay not that if you skip this step um, their cloud is still going to look really nice but this is this is one of those steps that you want to take to really achieve that that soft texture that you want from your clouds Ah, uh, thank you, artist. I'm I'm glad that those um, those live streams helped you out in thinking about approaching hands and faces and things like that. And to be honest with you, the um, the kind of the kind of techniques that I go over in that tutorial is something that you can apply to a lot of different things. Like uh, if you're drawing animals, or if you're doing landscapes like this, anything really. I try to I try to break down my own thought process because I, I want to I want to discover what works for me and then just share that with everybody and if it and if it helps then that that's fantastic and if it doesn't help then um, well then I'll, I'll try to think of another way to explain it or something like that but I just I I don't think that I don't think that art should be treated like magic um, you know, ma magicians, they, they covet the secrets of their illusions so that nobody can replicate them. But um, I, I kind of get that impression that, that artists sometimes have that, that same um, feeling about their work. Like, I don't want to share what I'm doing because um, other people can replicate it. And, and I have no feelings towards like doing that with my stuff. Um, none of none of what I do is a secret at all, and I don't want to keep. I don't want to make it ever be a secret. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of some of this dust, and then I'm gonna start adding the the land. Okay, so uh, there's the cloud. Now we're going to start, start doing the land a little bit. Uh, let me get to the comments really quick. Uh, I mentioned doing a class that you're going to offer on your website. Um, yes, so it's going to be downloadable. So it's going to be something that you would buy and then you would be able to download it and then you'd have it. Um, it would be, uh, it, and it's going to be in pastels. Uh, I have to wait for my camera to get back to me. Um, it's at the repair place. They emailed me today. Hopefully, I'll have it back soon. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the sticks again. And this is a dark gray. So this is a dark gray color, and the reason I'm using this, I don't want to use black here because um, it's, this land is going to be in the distance. And so uh, I, I want to leave black for the foreground objects to bring the most contrast to those. So I'm just going to use a gray here, and let's see. I'm just going to I'm going to use the the edge of it here, and to create kind of a tree line, I'm just going to kind of jagged do it do a jagged line like this. Just like that. And then I'm just going to pull down. And across. This this blending here is kind of not all that necessary uh, because we're going to add some, some greens to it and make it look like trees. But we're going to add a second layer here. So let's actually, no, we'll save that. We'll save that because we want to do this in, in layers. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this pan pastel again, and this time I'm going to use the the oxide, the chrome oxide green. 
And the reason I'm the reason I'm choosing this color here is because it's not a super bright green. It has some, um, you know, the value of it is is a little muted. The 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 saturation of it. So I'm going to use this for the trees here in the back, and I'm just using this as a base layer um, to kind of put some green here, and then I'll use the uh, I might use a little bit of the pencils, but mostly. I want this to, to remain um, out of focus. I don't want a lot of detail here because it's going to be in the background anyway. And so I might only end up using this and maybe a little bit of black if necessary. Um, but I'm kind of doing it in rows like this and I'm, I'm layering it to create gaps, kind of um, create this sensation that it's trees a little bit. And I want to try to get all the way up to the edge. If you happen to go over your edge a little bit or your edge is still a fuzzy, because mine is still fuzzy, so I'm going to use one of the pastel pencils to uh, make that edge nice and crisp. But for the most part, I'm just kind of putting some of this green on there might even touch it with a few dabs of yellow to, to give it a nice highlight. But uh, then you don't have to worry about detail here. No detail necessary. In fact, the, the less detail you have, the better, because it, you want it to look like it's in the distance. Oh goodness, Artista, you're all you're all kinds of questions today. <laughs> um, I think uh, for for that question in particular about living in Poland, I think I may address that question on the next drawing journal. That's a good question. Um, now I'm, I'm going to use, what is this? This is the bright yellow green. I, I like this green, so I'm just going to add a little bit of it here to give it a bit of highlight for some of those trees. Just add a bit of color variation, just subtly. Just like that. And what else? Yes, I'm going to use, so I have a dark gray pencil, and I'm just going to uh, sharpen up those lines to separate this from the sky there. Just kind of a jagged line. comes to this this land piece really the only sharp line you want is that one that's right against the sky for the trees and stuff you don't really want um, you don't really want any sharp lines I'm gonna go in here and just add a bit of variation a few little dark spots this would be like where the the trees have some some shadow on them just a little bit of texture in there nothing Nothing too much. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to create kind of a, a cliff. So this cliff is going to just come straight down like this. And just blend that out a little bit. Now you, you can use your block to do this. I don't even really have an explanation as to why I'm using the pencil. but. 
It's in my hand, so I'm going to use it. All right. I am going to switch to the block just to get that a bit darker. And I'm going to actually throw in a little bit of brown, too. So I think this is a Van Dyke brown. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of brown here. Uh, because you don't want you don't want anything to be a solid color. You want you always want to have like a little bit of variation in there, and that just gives it, you know, it's it's very subtle to the eye, but it's very important in the the grand scheme of like the the painting. So you always want to have a little bit of variation. All right, going here again with dark gray, create some separation of the trees in this cliff here and I think that's good there I'm going to tap off some of this excess before uh, moving on to the water so we're going to do the water next Uh, thank you, MWB. I'm glad that you uh, decided to pull out your pastels again. Oh, Hildy, if you have the pastels, you got to try them. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's add some water. Trying to think of what color to start with first. Um, I kind of like this, this, this dark green color. Pretty much anything you can use as a base for starting. So I'm just going to cut across right here. And this is like a really dark green. And I'm just going to pull down a little bit. All right. Uh, the next color that I'm going to use, I'm going to use a little bit of this turquoise color. Give it a nice turquoise color. Switching back to the pan pastels, and I want a whole bunch of this color. And I'm going to keep all of my blending horizontally so that I get that effect of water. And I'm going to come down to about here and come right across to about, uh, about right here. We're going to have some more land coming out this side, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Yeah, I like those colors. I'm going to use a little bit of my um, phalo blue here. I'm just going to throw some right here and a little bit back here as well and just blend it out add a little bit more there and let's add let's see I'm going to add some of the sky blue here this is the uh, Oh, this is the turquoise color again. <laughs> my mistake. Yeah, I, I gotta clean my sponge off a bit. Actually, I'm just gonna use some white. I'll just throw some white in here and brighten this water up because it's a bit dark right now. And it, I'm just I'm just throwing colors at this right now. So uh, just to have fun with it, add some blues, add some whites. Find the, find the value that you want. So I'm going to be using quite a bit of white here to soften up this water, brighten it a bit, and kind of 
try to blend out these pastels so that I don't keep running into them. And as you add more layers, you can get a little bit more uh, kind of jerky motions to create some, some wave effects. Just uh, throw it in there a little bit. Don't got to be exact in any way. The, the variation in your hand movements is what's going to help create that, that, uh, that water effect. So I'm just using white right now, and as I blend it out, it lightens up those values a bit, creates that nice water effect. You want to try to keep your your hand movement as horizontal as possible. If you if you change directions, it's gonna it's gonna make your water look super weird. Nobody likes weird water. I have let's see. I know I have a really pretty blue color here. So I have this nice blue color. I'm gonna add some of that in there. and then use this to blend it out. How do I avoid smudging? You don't seem to use any as a screen. Uh, oh, hello, Raymond. Um, so smudging, I'm not quite sure if I, uh, do you mean with my, my hand? Uh, I don't, well for one, I don't, I don't touch the paper with this hand. That's one way I avoid smudging, but other than that, um, not, I'm not sure what you are exactly referring to as far as smudging because I feel like there's I feel like everything's kind of smudged together Let's see here, what color do I need? I need a little bit of this, this dark blue right here in the back, right here a little bit, just like that. Um, maybe, maybe a bit of this, this kind of turquoise color coming through here. Uh, let's add some more white to this area and we'll add some white here as well and I think I'm going to use my finger here because I'm not quite getting the blend that I want from the little blending knife. Uh, hello, Michelle. I am really liking the pan pastels. Thank you. Uh, so idea for the landscape, a waterfall into a lovely pond, river, mist would be awesome for one of your pastel pieces. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, oops, I, I think I accidentally spit on my piece. Um, 
my wife has constantly been asking me to do a piece uh, with waterfall, and I've I've been trying to um, to incorporate a waterfall in some way, uh, but I just quite haven't found the uh, like the um, the idea. I haven't quite came up with the idea in my head, and um, I want it to I want it to look nice, so I. I did, I did actually uh, look through a few pictures and I, I have a few pictures of waterfalls that I started to get prepared, uh, but I just haven't done it yet. And I was actually gonna do it as a painting, but doing it as pastels would be fun too. All right, let's see. I think I need a bit more white here. just in this area. There we go. <clears throat> Softly blend all that out. Get rid of some of that excess dust. Uh, one one moment. Uh, can I do a similar technique to create wet sand as you do with oils? Well, I'm trying to think of how I would create wet sand with oils. Uh, to be honest with you, just about any blending technique that you do with oils, you can do with pastels. And <clears throat> I have a bit of wet sand that I'll be doing here, and uh, pretty much the the way that I'd go about doing it is the same as you know uh, how I would do it with oils. So, um, yeah. Once once I get there, I will explain what I'm doing. There's a bit of a, so I have so this is where the beach is going to come in, about right here. And then there's going to be some land right here. It's a bit of a shadow. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna do this land part first. So the way that I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take my dark gray again, and it's, let's see. Uh, let me get rid of some of this dust first. Getting ahead of myself, I wanna clean off my hands a bit too. Uh, what do I do with these pictures? Yeah, I sell them if, if, if somebody's interested. Uh, one of the other previous um, live stream demonstrations, I posted it on Facebook and five minutes later it sold. So I'm, I'm not against selling them in any way. Uh, yeah, I have a couple I have a couple pieces of glassine paper to lay down if I needed to, but I just haven't needed to, so I, I don't. Um, okay, so let's let's do this. So coming about here. Uh, this is black. I grabbed the wrong one. I knew that seemed too dark. So I'm using a dark gray instead. And I'm just gonna kind of come up, come out here, and once I get it, let's 
So here's my little land. Kind of cliff thing with some trees hanging off. And I'm gonna take some take some brown colors and just create some kind of rocky things here. A little bit of black as well for the contrast. Nothing um, nothing too detailed, just kind of scribbling to create some variation. We'll do more layers on that. Uh, but I do want to use some more of my uh, chrome green oxide color once I clean my little palette knife thingy off. And we're just going to add some, some green here to bring some life into this. Switch right over to the bright greenish yellow color. There we go. Let's blend some of this out here. And then what shall we do? So there's gonna be there's gonna be a bit more detail here. So let's go ahead and get into that detail. Um, I'm going to use I'm going to use a little bit brighter, uh, almost yellow brown. I think this is an ochre, so just going to create some kind of effects in the the rock here a little bit. Not a lot of detail. Just some subtle, some subtle stuff to give it some texture. And I'm gonna switch back and forth between a few colors, a little bit darker brown, a little bit lighter brown, just to just to add plenty of variation there. Just to make it a bit more interesting to look at. But you don't wanna to add too much of just one color since pastels are so strong, they, they tend to, to start to look flat really quick if you add too much of one color into one, one area. So just um, make sure you keep it varied. Something like that. Uh, yes, they call it glassine paper in the UK also. Um, you can get it at Jackson's Art Supply. That's where I get all my art supplies. So if you're in the UK, you'll get your supplies pretty much the same place I get my supplies. All of my supplies come from the UK since I live in Poland. There's that. So I'm going to use a little bit of the bright green here to create some kind of foliage, some grass stuff coming up. Just kind of touching it a little bit, adding little dots. and a bit of yellow as well. How am I so good? <laughs> um, practice. 
I just do it over and over again. That's really, that's really it. The, uh, the other thing that I do is I, I don't continue to make the same mistakes. Um, if I'm doing something wrong, I correct it. Uh, I stay patient. Well, for the most part, I try to stay patient. I really do. Um, but other than that, uh, that's all it really takes, you know. Um, if you go to the beginning of my channel, I wasn't always so good, as you put it. Um, it just takes it just takes time, and I I know that sometimes it can be overwhelming or it can be boring to take so much time for things to take so much time but I mean to be completely honest with you it it goes by really quickly sometimes I I look at the things that I do and I'm like I don't even know how I did that but then there's other things that I, I look at and I'm like oh gosh what was I thinking in fact yesterday's live stream was like that because I tried to paint a bird for the first time and it didn't really like work out all that well. And I made plenty of mistakes and well, next time I paint a bird, I'm going to try to avoid those mistakes. And that's uh all you do. There's there's so many there's there's so many like basic techniques to learn and then uh, once you, you know, once you do learn them, just apply them in different areas and you just have fun with it. I got this one green pencil here. I'm going to try to do a little bit of separation between these two. Maybe I should use yellow. I have a yellow pencil here as well. Try to do a little bit of separation between these two land masses because that one in the background is kind of blending in a bit too much. And we can throw in a little bit of I don't know, just some some foliage here, just throw in a little bit of grass growing. Adding different types of texture can help the you know the plant stuff kind of come come to life. So adding a few of these little branches here and I have a darker green so I can do the same thing with that. Just kind of it's it's a subtle look, but on the, the final result, it's it shows up, and so maybe a few down here as well, just little grassy things popping up randomly. Um, let's see what else. Um, I'm gonna take my black, and you know maybe there's like a little tree thing sticking out like this. A few tree branch things that just come off the cliff and there you have that okay I'm gonna get rid of some of this dust here and then we'll put in the sand Uh, hello, Harry. I'm glad you were able to make it today. I hope you're feeling better. I know that you weren't feeling too well recently. All right, let's add some sand. So I don't quite have the sand colors that I need uh, with the pan pastels, but I do have this color, and I think this is a good base color. Um, to be honest with you, the sandpaper itself is a pretty good color, so I've got that going for me. So I'm going to work all the way up to my water line and even beyond it a little bit. And this is going to be the part where the, the water 
meets the sand and it kind of has that overlapping and this this is actually uh, pretty easy because what you do is you you find the color that's underneath the water and that's that darker sand and from there you just add the highlights of the water right over top of it and that's it that's how you do that's how you do the water meeting the sand effect it's really quite simple but this is the closest sand color I've got with the pan pastels so I'm just gonna do this a little bit and then I'll add the, the other colors over top of it it gives me a good base color Oh yes, the Pan Pastel pencils are just fantastic for detail. I, I love them for detail. I actually don't use them too much though, um, but when I do like tree branches and things like that, they're just fantastic. I'm glad to hear you're doing better, Harry. I have a little bit, I have a little bit of a secret that I'm going to do uh, on this uh, pastel piece and I'm going to keep it a secret from the live stream. However, if you go over to my Facebook page um, or my Instagram and uh, whatnot, you'll see the final picture of this uh, maybe an hour or so after the live stream ends and you'll see the little the little secret thing that I add to it It won't be a secret once you see the picture. It will be very obvious, but let's just say I'm leaving out a key subject from This pastel piece for the live stream. I don't want the live stream to go on forever um, So I'm going to keep that For the dedicated individuals that follow me on Instagram and Facebook and you can find the links to those in the description so I'm not trying to hide from you all right now we need to uh, let's see actually this color is not too bad it's it's a bit it's a bit orange but I need a I need a a little bit of red so I'm, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of red here uh, this like red oxide color kind of rusty color but it's it's a bit too dark but it's it's a nice it's a nice color and it has it has the tone that I need for this this sand so I'm just gonna add it really quick add a little bit of it to get that red sandy look because the sands way too dark right now all right, that's good. Let's um, need to find the right color here. And I'm looking. I think this is uh, this is pretty close. Okay, I was wrong. That's not close at all. I'm not using that color. Let me try to do. This might be too dark, but. That's a little bit too dark. I don't quite have the colors that I feel like I need, but I'm gonna blend this out. I'm gonna do uh, the portion where the water's coming in. Try to get that color correct. So that's, that's pretty much the color that you need. Kind of a nice dark brown. Soften that edge up a little bit. And let's see. Yeah, so that's a pretty good color for that water line, but I want to get the the color for the sand first, but I don't quite have the color that I need. Let's see what that looks like. That's pretty close. This is pretty close. I think once I blend it out, it will look good. This isn't 
yeah, that's not bad at all. Once I do a few layers of this color, I think it will show up nicely. Uh, hello, Anne. And hello to anybody else I may have missed coming into the live stream. Just about to wrap this pastel piece up. I want to get this sand looking really, really nice before calling it done. I want to make sure I get my colors just right. I love being ambidextrous and not having to choose a hand. I can just use whatever hand, whatever hand I want, and I'll prove it. <laughs> yeah, that's a much better sand color. That's exactly what I was looking for. I need a little bit of, uh, what's the color here? I think, yeah, that, that's about right. Yeah, a little bit of reddish color coming into the sand. Just a touch of it. Let me see if I missed anything in the chat really quick. Uh, yeah, that's a good sand color. Let me add a bit more of this. And I don't want to. I don't want to be too heavy with just this one color. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually add in a little bit of like just kind of mess, like sand mess, I guess you could say. A little bit of sand mess with that gray. And just because I, if you if you stick with just the one color, it's going to. It's going to be too uh, flat, so you, you you need to have that subtle color variation. So just throw in a little bit um, of different colors to create that variation, so that when you blend it out, it looks natural. That's the that's the important quality to have. All right, uh, I'm going to use my finger here. It's probably messy, but that's a good thing. But I think that for the, I think for the sand, like the the colors, I think this is right where I want to be with the colors of the sand, and I'm going to put that color back. Uh, so we're going to do the water now, and the water is going to be super easy. And the water is kind of like the cloud in the sense that you can use the pencil to create the that effect that that effect that you want to get. Um, oh, thank you so much, Steve. I'm glad that you, uh, I'm glad that you're enjoying the live stream and everything like that. So for the, for the water, I'm just using the pencil, uh, the white pencil, and I'm just going to create kind of a jagged, jagged, uneven line, but mostly horizontal. I'm going to stay horizontal. And you're not going to want to blend this out, so just be aware of that. And we're just going to come up right onto the sand. I'm just going to come up right onto the sand. And when you get, when you get to the edge of the water, 
you're gonna you're you're gonna kind of want this smooth look. So I'm just gonna draw the the line where the water's coming, and it's gonna be kind of smooth, but also jagged. I know that seems contradictory, but it's just gonna come over the 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 uh, sand just like this, and it's not gonna be even. But there's gonna be some some rounded spots, but it's gonna have some uh, jaggedness to it as well. See how, see, it, that was it. That was it, that's all you gotta do. That, isn't that easy? And then you just go through and add, you know, some bubble highlights. You can even add dots for bubbles. You know, add some bubbles. You can come up a little bit higher in some areas, add some bubbles, some subtle variations, but really, that's it. That's how you do the water to the sand transition. You get that dark shadow of the sand, and what that, that shadow is, the sand being wet, but it's also being shaded from the water. And, uh, and then you just go in with your white pencil and scribble some, scribble. Just, I'm just scribbling right now. That's all I'm doing, just scribbling. But that, this, this main line here is the important one here. So you can go over that one a couple times if you want. And you can bring it up a little bit higher. But yeah, we're just scribbling now. Don't get too carried away though. You know, you, you still want to be able to see that dark brown. My pencil needs a my pencil needs some sharpening here, real quick. All right, now I have a sharper pencil. Uh, Artista, I do not, I, I share my reference photos on my Patreon page, um, but I, not this, I don't share the, I don't have the reference photo to share here um, for this this drawing. Uh, and then also, after you get comfortable with what you have up on the land, you want to add some of the the water variation to to the water behind this part. For the water that happens behind, what you're kind of creating is like this, this, um, this the, these really weird water shapes that are like squiggly lines, but they all fit together like a puzzle piece. That is what you're doing. And um, as you get farther away from this water line, they get squished thinner and thinner so that you can really only see them um, when you're next right in here at the waterline. Otherwise, they just get squished and you don't really see them anymore. So um, you don't have to add too many of those. But over here, it's good to, it, where these darker values are, it's, it's good to add those there. Add a little bit of waves here in the back. But that's that's I mean that's pretty much it for the um, the little sand here. You want to make sure your highlights are nice and bright because the water here gets almost as close to white in uh, as you can get. Add some bubbles and just continue to add. And then in the in the back, you can add some of the sparkles. So some of those really bright highlights with your pencil that happens in the water, a little, little uh, where the 
the waves are catching the light of the sun. So just add a few of those little sparkly par parts and uh, goodness, that's, that's pretty much it for the, uh, for this landscape. Put a wave in the background here. Some more little sparkly spots. That's a technical term, by the way, sparkly spots. So if you're ever wondering what these reflection marks in the water is called, it's called sparkly spots, just so you know. Otherwise, nobody's going to know what you're talking about. Everybody knows what a sparkly spot is. All right, add some more little waves, just subtle details in the back. And as you go farther back towards the horizon line, everything starts to get compressed. So you don't want to um, you don't want to go back there all crazy and add in a whole bunch of stuff. It, it's all about subtlety. Uh, now where this water's coming in and kind of crashing on this little rock over here, there's going to be you know there's going to be some a little bit more white going on over here, and then also it's um. It's a bit darker over there. It should be there should be a little bit of a shadow underneath this rock where this water is hitting. So just add a little bit of blue there, a little bit of darker blue, just to give it a nice shadow. Uh, you can even you can even throw a little bit of the shadow color here, where this wave is coming in. To break it up just a bit, just in case it's looking a, a too flat, you just add a little bit of shadow color, just small amounts, nothing crazy, because you don't want to add up so much that you have to blend this stuff out again, because at this point you can't blend this. There's no more blending involved here uh, for the water. It, it, everything that you add has to stay there. Um, and I think that's I think that's pretty good for that. Um, I have this white. I'm gonna add there. I'm gonna come in here and just add some dots. In, in some portions, I like to use the, the squares rather than the pencil because the, the squares, they're a bit softer. And so you get a little, um, a little bit better effect here. So that's why I'm using this to create some of the detail. It's just a bit softer. Come in here and create some of the little sparkly dots. You almost can't do too many sparkly dots. Uh, and there we go with that. Now to finish this piece up, I want to add a nice shadow. Uh, so I have, I have this gray color here. So we're gonna create, um, we're gonna put a little rock here. So let's, let's just put a little rock, a little rock here. Because beaches have rocks, right? So we're just going to put a little rock there. Uh, maybe we'll put a small one here. Maybe another another rock right here. And I'm not doing anything with them. That, that's fine. Uh, but what I want to create is kind of a, a shadow of a tree. So I'm just going to kind of create this horizontal effect like this and just come in, come across and because the trees have like these branches that come out there's going to be a few a few pieces that are, are broken off and just kind of sticking out randomly and we want to put some holes in the shadow of this tree so that 
we can still see where the light's coming through and throw some color down and I'm going to use I'm going to use a little blending thing to get this out to blend it to blend this shadow out Uh, you are very welcome, Rose, I or Charlotte. Um, I'm glad that you came by and enjoyed the tutorial. It's just about over. Sorry to break everybody's heart, but it is finally come to an end. All right, and there you have the shadow. Maybe where some of the spots come in, you can add a little bit of white there. All right, everybody, that is it for this uh, tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the landscape. Um, this was a lot of fun to do, a lot of new stuff for me. I've never done a beach scene before. Um, so thank you for coming by, checking it out. Uh, remember, if you enjoyed it, uh, please Give it a share and a thumbs up and whatnot because I'm trying to get my channel to 10,000 subscribers. I'm getting real close and it's growing every day and I super appreciate everybody that supports my channel. It's, I just, it's, sometimes it's just so overwhelming how great you guys are and I really appreciate it and I want to continue to uh, bring you these tutorials and these live streams for many years to come so the the more you support it the more you share it uh, the better off that will be so thanks again and i will see you all next time take care peace